In this video, I'm going to share five pro tips to making your self-tape stand out to casting directors, directors, and producers who might be watching them. To some of you, this might be obvious, but sometimes you just need a refresher of the basics. Tip number one, do as much research on the filmmakers as you can. There's not always a ton of detail in the breakdown, but if you know who the director is, or you know who the production is, or the casting director, you could take a half an hour, 20 minutes, to do a little bit of Googling and see what kind of projects they do. Hopefully you know some of them, and if not, maybe you can find a way to take a glimpse at one or two projects. This doesn't dictate a ton, but what it does do is it gives you a little bit of a vibe. It gives you a little bit of a style, and oftentimes filmmakers like to stay within that wheelhouse. So if you can give a vibe off or try to emulate, not copy, but adapt just a little bit of that voice that they might be looking for, you're giving yourself a little bit of an edge. So a Tarantino film doesn't feel like a Nancy Myers film, right? They're completely different vibes. So that always helps because not often do you have a really detailed description from the casting director on like what, you know, the, the, the details of the character or the history or all that is. Sometimes you just have your sides and that's it. So do as much research on the filmmakers and that will help you get a little bit of perspective because everything's remote now and you can't really ask questions. And even if you could ask questions, you can't really ask, well, what's your vibe? So that's an advantage of sending in tapes that you don't really have when you just go in cold for a read. Um, read, tip number two, read the directions carefully. We often, and it's human nature, read the first few lines of something and sort of get the gist. Follow everything that they ask you to follow to the T. And just by doing that, I can guarantee you, you're going to stand out because 90% of people are submitting and they're ignoring something. They're putting a slate shot in when they're not supposed to. They're doing the wrong thing on the slate. They're stitching all their takes together when clearly they asked for separate takes. Or all these little details, not just on the characters, but also on the directions on how to submit. Follow them to the T. Just giving them what they actually are looking for sometimes can be a huge relief and you might get shortlisted just because you actually listen to the instructions. Okay, no guarantees there, but again, this is about standing out. Lighting and sound. At this point, it's sort of a no-brainer. We're in 2023. Like, you should know that what you see me as right here is, like, basically what your self-tape should look like in terms of light quality, sound quality, and all that. There shouldn't be a distracting background. Uh, it can be a different color but you know it should be about you and the sound should be clear it shouldn't sound like you're far away from the mic and they should be really able to see you well ideally lit as you know with soft light not like too many hard shadows um and and, and framed well sort of you know not too wide not too far away unless it calls for a lot of action and not too uh, close. You know, you don't want to make people uncomfortable. And you, of course, want to look right off camera. You don't want to look right into the camera. You want to look right off camera so they see it, your, your face. And oftentimes what you can do is you can put a little picture of, um, you know, Burt Reynolds or some somebody that you kind of trust uh, over there to sort of play with if you don't have a reader for your, um, for your other lines. If you do have a reader, obviously you're reading with the person. But sometimes people put them over here, and that's not great. They kind of want to see you but they don't want to look right at you. And you don't want to be uncomfortable. You don't want to make them uncomfortable and look right in the camera either. So lighting, sound should be really good. Should be very, you should be in a quiet space. Shouldn't have a lot of echo. Uh, shouldn't have a lot of distractions or any distractions. There shouldn't be a lot of stuff behind you. You can do it against a wall. You can do it in a sort of an ambiguous space. But if there's like tchotchkes on shelves behind you, not a good vibe. Four, find moments in the sides, in the scripts, to make interesting and unique decisions. Now, this is where most actors, I feel like, fall flat a little bit. They read the script, sort of get a character in their head. Maybe there's not a great breakdown, and if there is, they, they sort of start embodying that, right, the way they would do it. But they don't really analyze every single word. And sometimes that's a little overboard, and sometimes that, you know, you think about it even more than the writer did. But that, I think that's a good thing, 
because you got to understand there's hundreds of submissions, right? So now you've followed instructions, you've done your research on the filmmakers, you know a little bit of the voice that they might be looking for, might be. Um, you lit everything well and it sounds good. Now make interesting decisions. That's really ultimately what's going to get you the job. Interesting decisions. Now, point four and five sort of go hand in hand. Four is read the script carefully and find moments where there's a shift in energy, uh, a pivot of some sort, something that allows you to play. Usually when people choose sides, it's not just a scene where somebody says, oh, hey, let's go shopping. Yeah, let's go shopping. Great. Usually it's in the middle of a scene, something happening. Often they intentionally send sort of the more difficult scenes. Um, there might be some emotion involved. There might be a turn of events, a betrayal uh, in a drama or in an action film, or there might be, you know, um, a breakup or, or a you know, I said betrayal already, um, or something quirky or weird that happens. So they, that, you know, the filmmakers are often looking for moments to capture an interesting decision. And not, not a lot of actors actually think about that. They sort of think about the character, they think about the line delivery, they're wondering too much, oh, can I, can I read or not? If you're at home and you're able to memorize the lines, there's nothing wrong with reading because sometimes you don't have a lot of time to actually submit these. But if you do have time, you should memorize the lines. If you don't have time, you should spend as much time as you can thinking about where you're going to make interesting decisions in the script. And then go what I call five deep. Dismiss the first idea. So let's say you get to a point where in the script somebody says, Hey, honey, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Uh, by the way, I cheated on you. And then the next line is, how could you? Everybody's mind goes to this sense of betrayal, the serious, like, you know, sad, how could you? Throw it away. What else could you do? Well, you could get angry. You could be the kind of person that maybe knew that they were being cheated on. So now you're adding layers. And so you could express anger and you could be like, how could you? Throw it away. Do that five times. You'll really have to start thinking about the decisions that you're making and the choice that you're making. So that, that's how you get to the interesting original stuff. Because most actors are going to do number, option op, option one, option two, and chances are for most people, it's going to be a, the same option because humans aren't that different at the surface level. But the deeper you go, the more you get into your core, you are different. And that's where you start making interesting decisions. So go five deep. Throw away option one, option two, option three, and option four, and it'll break your head. But option five will be interesting because... Maybe that will allow you to do it in a sarcastic way where you give a rendition where it's like obvious that you knew and you're sort of playing with the person, which gives you an empowered position as opposed to a victim position. And that will stand out because most people are going to be the victim. Oh, I got cheated on. I got to be sad you are ahead of that. You're like a chess player, you're nine plays ahead. You're a smart character, you're ahead of the game, you are an empowered character, and not only did you know, you're not even mad anymore, you're waiting for it to happen. And maybe the how could you is delivered in a way where it's almost a joke. Like, really? You think I'm just finding that out now? And that... You know, again, I created this whole like, random scenario in my head, but that's what really stands out. Okay, that's so. So now you've done the basics. You've done your research. You 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 read the directions. You're giving them what they're looking for. Your your lighting and sound is good. Those are the basics. Good, um, and you will stand out from those because most people don't know what they're doing. Now you're acting in a at a level that makes people think, huh? This person makes interesting decisions. Not the character, maybe not what we were going for. But an interesting decision. You stand out. You get remembered. Um, and the fifth point, I said the point four and five sort of 
work hand in hand with each other, take risks. Really take risks. And by taking risks, I don't mean do stupid things. Like don't, you know, act over the top or, you know, do something crazy. Um, but take risks that nobody else, you know, uh, that, that, that only you could do. Like take an, take an approach to the character that's out there. Like oftentimes you can deliver a couple of takes. So deliver your interesting one first. That's thought out, interesting, the way you really would do it. And then you can sort of tone it down and play more vanilla like for the next one. Say, okay, here's a more sort of toned down um, vanilla take. You can, you know, whatever. But put your character into it, into it and, and really go for it. And you will turn off a few people. But I think in pleasing and trying to please everybody, you don't end up pleasing enough people adequately to actually give you a job. Because you really have to be exceptional to get through all the layers. So the only way to really get that is to take risks. And you'll find your voice, and, and, and as you take those risks, you'll see that there's sort of this thing that you do, you're sort of the Jim Carrey type, and you go over the top, and, and those are the roles that you'll start getting more and more of. People will remember you more and more for that, and over time, uh, you've created a brand for yourself, and you're that guy or that girl or um, that person. So take risks and do things that just you know, stand out a little bit. Like, I'm wearing an orange shirt. That's not necessarily something that you should do, but why not? You wear an orange shirt on a gray background. It, it pops. Uh, get a yellow backdrop. Everybody's doing blue and gray. That's what they're expecting. There's no rule in the book that says it can't be yellow or it can't be pink. You know, uh... Find little ways to stand out like that, too. So you have a visual aesthetic on your thumbnail. Ooh, what's this girl on a pink background? That's interesting. Why is that person, you know, the, whoa, orange shirt. Okay. Loud much? Make it relevant to the, to the, sip, the script, of course. Um, like, you know, don't go crazy over the top with colors if it's a really, really dramatic scene. But then again, you know what? There, 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 there are no rules. Take risks. Be yourself. Do your homework. So to recap again, five pro tips to stand out in your auditions online and your casting tapes that you're sending in. Do as much research on the filmmakers as you can. Try to get in their heads a little bit. Read the descriptions carefully and submit according to their requests exactly. Um, light and make it sound good. Find moments to have unique opportunities to make unique decisions and then throw out the first four and go with the fifth option and take risks. Okay, be yourself. Hope this helped. Uh, subscribe, like, do the thing where you get notified with the bell icon and uh, comment below if you want any more videos like this. I'm always looking for stuff to share and to add. So let me know if you wanna know anything else. Thanks for watching.